Welcome to Mini Days. So today I'm going to show you how I made this vintage style cushion cover with a bunny on it. I love it. First of all you need your inner because that's the size you're going to be working around. So once you've got an inner you can use just measure the length and the width. Obviously if it's square it's going to be the same measurement but mine was 14 by 20 and I'm just adding 3 inches onto the 14 and onto the 20 so it's got an extra inch and a half all the way around. A lot of people just add an inch on but I'm not good with a sewing machine so I'd rather add more on. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut my cover out of this piece of fabric. Now I already marked this with a pencil before so with these very very small scissors I'm going to cut out what is going to be the front cover of my pillowcase. Any scraps you've got, just keep them, they're really handy just for making things. Actually, I'll use that later on in the project. So, I didn't really have enough of this material left to do the back, so I'm just going to use this floral vintage fabric that I picked up from the charity shop. Uh, it was £8, probably the most I've paid in a charity shop, but I really liked it. Last night, I sat cutting out flowers, actually. I might use one for this project, but that's why this is looking a bit holy. So I'll just find somewhere that hasn't got any holes. Here we go. So I'm going to just use this for the back of my pillow. So if you put the front on, and then you know what size it needs to be cut at, but then cut it about an extra third longer, so that you have enough to do your overlap. And then cut that section into two pieces, making one piece about two thirds, um, just so, just basically so one piece overlaps the other enough. So once you put those pieces on, you can see that's where your overlap is. Next what you want to do is fold the edges, so you fold both sides of the opening um, over twice like this. So over twice and then iron that flat. Once you've ironed them flat, it's so much easier then to just pin them down. Now I put about three pins in here. <laughs> I use as little as possible when it comes to pins because I always end up getting them stuck in my fingers when I'm using the sewing machine. I'm saying that like I use the sewing machine much. I don't. I cannot use the sewing machine. I'm going to try and sew along this edge here just so that it's a nice neat opening when you look at the back of the pillow. So with the wonders of technology that is my stitch done. Now you can't see on this video but that is not a straight line. But it's a line and that will do. <laughs> so this is basically the pillow um, case cover, a cushion case cover inside out. So I'm just lining everything into place so that will overlap that. Now I'm happy with that. So next what you want to do is pin these three pieces together. So I'm just going to start by pinning the thickest part really first, which is where you have the most layers overlapping here. So just continue pinning all four sides takes a little while so it's just to kind of um, make sure you write through all the all the different um, layers and then once you've done that just run it through the sewing machine now I just used a straight stitch for this and I have edited this a few times <laughs> but um, all in all I think I've done okay with my first proper attempt at using the sewing machine so I just stitched all four sides and then once you finish doing that it's really essential that you cut the corners off Obviously don't cut any further in than where you've just sewn because then you'll have a hole in the corner. So once you've cut all four, four sides off, really that is your um, cushion cover made. You just need to turn it the right way around. And I'm not going to put the pillow, um, the inner in yet because I'm going to do um, something on the plain side to make it look a bit more fancy. I just use a sharpie pen to push through the corners and that is it. I'm happy with that cover. And there's the opening and that my inner will go in. So once you turned over, I'm just going to give this a quick iron. And then what I'm going to do is just use some of the scraps of this material to make like a fringe border to go around. Now, I'm sure anybody professional <laughs> who's made cushion covers before, which I have not, um, would probably sew this in with the material. But I just, I like to add things on sometimes and then you can, it's more flexible, you can change things. So just cutting a strip of material about two inches and then cutting like a frill into it. And if you just give it a little rub together, it gets rid of all the loose edges and makes it a bit raggy looking. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to do enough of this to go around all four sides of the cushion cover. So for now, just lie it on. So it's like half on, half off. 
and um, don't worry if you if you um, haven't got if it's a different material as well so it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with the colors all fitting in together so just lie everything on for now nothing's getting attached at this stage because I'm really not sure where I'm going to put anything so once I dug out my bits of old lace and pearls and wherever I could find to fit in I just started kind of layering up a border so I'm mainly using this as a stretchy lace fabric which is an off-white the other piece is just like a thick cotton vintage fabric I bought the other day the edges that are a bit plain I'm putting them on the outside these pieces I got well, these are off me wedding invites. Mm, not sure about that piece. It looks quite shiny. I don't like shiny things. Is that side more matte? Mm, I'll probably change that later. But for now, it will do. While well, I'll just look at what else I'm going to put on here. This has got a slightly peachy tinge to it, which is fine. I don't mind one um, slightly peachy colour. I think it kind of looks quite vintage actually. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, I cut some flowers out of that material that I used on the other side. And I'm just going to go with this one flower because it's got a slightly peachy tone to it. And I cut out the bunny rabbit that I drew. I'll show you how I've done this. I just got a piece of A4 paper and I just sketched out, copied off a bunny on Google Images, sketched out a bunny. Now I drew this, sketched around this a few times just to get it like a bunny shape. So once you've done this, just place it onto a piece of material and draw around it. Now, if anybody wants me to email them a copy of this template, please just message me and I will email you one back. So once you've drawn around your template, there you have your shape of the bunny on your fabric. Now, I just used a permanent um, Sharpie black marker. It's a fine tip one. Let me just have a look. Yep, it is a fine point one. And um, I just added some detail. I kind of wanted it to look a bit like a print. Um, and then just go around it and just if you do this bit wrong you can do it again if you really want to but just take your time at this I mean I've done this with a cup of tea and I probably worked on it for maybe half an hour and then I cut it out now I didn't cut right up to the bunny because well one you wouldn't be able to cut its whiskers out and two I wanted it to have like a vintagey scrapbooky feel so I just cut I tried to cut in the direction of the fabric so that would have like a, a better um, kind of raggy edge so that's your bunny pretty much done. I'm just going to lie it there, slightly off centre, roughly where you're going to have things. Next I just took some hessian, I love hessian, I love the matte gold natural colour. I put it on everything, so I cut some little leaves out of that. I haven't glued them or anything to keep them from fraying, I just kind of cut them straight out from the, from the fabric. So I took some doilies that I picked up again in the um, vintage shop the other day. And once you're happy with um, all of your little bits that you're going to have attached around the edge of your pillow case, just pin it all together. I've pinned the thickest bits first just to get them out of the way. Don't worry if you pin right through the whole cushion cover because it wouldn't matter at this stage because you're just holding everything in place so you can run the sewing machine around the very edge um, just to nip everything in. So once you've done all four sides and all your bits of lace and doily are attached, don't worry about your rabbit and anything like bits of fabric like this because um, you can just glue them on later or sew them on later. So I ran the sewing machine on the very, very edge of the cushion cover, just catching in the bits of lace and doilies and obviously the frill that were cut. So that's all the edges caught on. So when you turn your pillowcase over, you can then just trim off I'm not just trimming everything to the length of the kind of um, raggy trim that we attached. It takes a little while to cut the doilies because they're really thick. And then I just lay my bunny rabbit on just exactly where I want it. So once you've got it in place, just bend half of it up and then just put some glue on to get the main thing in place. And then you can just go back and just lift up the little bits and just glue those bits down. Glue guns are just brilliant for anything like this because they dry straight away. If I had longer, I might have sewn it on. I don't know, maybe not. So okay, so next I'm gonna glue on the flower and the leaves just in the same way. Like I say, it's really essential that you get them exactly where you want them before you glue them on because you just wouldn't be able to move it. Once the glue dries, it's kind of, you can't move it. That's the good thing about a glue gun. It's so good for things like this. So I'm just kind of lifting part of them up and then gluing it down. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I don't think I'm going to add any more hessian. 
I literally am making this up as I go along, which I do that with some of my projects, but I just find it's just, it's just more fun than planning everything out. I literally just like to have a rough idea in my head and then make it up as I go along. <laughs> Okay, so next I just got some bits of lace, some beads, some of the fabric that I'd made the border of the, of the cover with, and tie them into a knot bow. And I'm going to attach it, I'm just going to sew it onto the top left hand side of the pillowcase. Just be careful you don't go right through both layers of the cover because you won't get your cushion pushed up to the corner. And I found a little gold heart, I'm just going to attach that on here onto where the rags are too. Okay, so next I'm going to make the edges of my cover raggy. So I'm just carefully cutting up to the um, where the sewing machine has just nipped everything in together. It's it's not that you don't have to be too careful here. It really would be really hard to cut right up through where it's been sewn together. So just keep going back and forward and just rough it up with your hand just to make sure you've got a nice raggy finish. The bits of lace is a little bit trickier because it kind of moves when you're cutting it. Just go over it a few times if you need to and then that will give your pillowcase a nice raggy edge. I'm happy with that. Okay, all that's left now is to put the inner in. I found this much nicer feather inner um, which I took out one of my good cushions but I'm going to use this definitely. So just push it in, make sure it's pushed up right up to the corners. And I'm just kind of making sure the feathers are all <laughs> nice and even. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. And that is your vintage style cushion cover finished. Okay, I'm happy with that. That is it finished and I love it. It fits in really well here. And that didn't take that long to do and I think it's really effective. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this DIY. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.